Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings and peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm your host. And trending in the news is the topic of Afghanistan. All eyes are on Afghanistan. So we got Angelina Jolie talking about Afghanistan. Just opening up her Instagram account for the first time because she got a letter from a young girl from Afghanistan. We got Benny Shapiro talking about Afghanistan. Say that women have rights that comply with Sharia. That means women don't have rights. Uh, within the frameworks of Islam, under Sharia law, uh-huh, uh-huh. There's a lot that could be said on a lot of the things that people are talking about. So to cross-check some of these things and separate fact from fiction, because in there, you're going to have Islam and these terms that you're probably not familiar with being brought up. So we want to go ahead and educate you. We're not siding with any political party. We just want to get to the truth in a lot of these matters. So let's go ahead and bring our next guest out. Dr. Sabil Ahmed here on The Dean Show. The Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah, brother Eddie. Peace uh, be upon you too. Mashallah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. All praise be to Allah. You see a lot of, alhamdulillah, uh, you see a lot of people coming out of the woodwork. Now, it's interesting. You had Angelina Jolie, and I don't know if this was a good opportunity for her now because she didn't have an Instagram account. And now, under the pretext of helping the Afghan women, she's decided to launch her Instagram account mm -hmm. and come out because someone wrote her a letter and she's coming out to help the women of Afghanistan, which seems like a very noble and righteous thing. What do you think about that? Well, first and foremost, as you mentioned, uh, we are not here to support a people, the Taliban, the Afghanistan or any government, any, any you know, people. We are here to dissect the truth. We, we want to find out. There are so many things going on from all over the world. We want to find out the truth from the friction and what does Islam teach in all of these uh, chaotic things, times that we are going through. So when it comes to uh, Angelina Jolie, you know, anytime anyone uh, wants to help out the people who are helpless, we have to say that's a good deed. However, we have to right away, we have to, you know, ask her a question. That yes, if you're helping out, uh, if, you're, if you want to be the voice of the people, the girls in, in, in Afghanistan, what about the voice of the girls in this country in the U.S.? What about the women who are going through so much suffering in this country? Uh, where is your voice for those individuals? And then you may be asking, you know, Brother Sabil, what voice of what people, people are free over here in this country? There is no suffering, right? A person may be thinking and saying that. So what I would say to them is, I would say that, uh, you know, what about the voice of those uh, women, 93,000 of them, each single year in the USA, they are raped in this country by Americans on, on the American women. Who is going to speak up? Who is going to be their voice? There are 20% of the ladies in this country, they, they go through incest by their family members, by their friends, anyone who is going to be their, their voice. There are 7.8 million spousal abuse cases in this country. Who's going to be their voice? Right? And the list goes on and on. All of this Me Too movement. So we have to be the voice of every person suffering anywhere in the world. May that be here. May that be France. May that be Afghanistan or anywhere around the world. And that's what Islam teaches us. I want to uh, get the audience involved in the comment section below. I want you, this is pretty straightforward and easy, if you guys can go ahead and do some research and put those numbers in the comments to what uh, Dr. Sabil had mentioned, some of these uh, facts. And it seems like you're pointing out some hypocrisy here. Hypocrisy, double standard. I mean, we have to be the voice of every person who, who, that, who, who does not have a voice. But why are we just picking and choosing only the Muslim ladies or only the Muslim girls? Because that, that gives the impression that only Muslim ladies are suffering by the Muslims. No, we have to let people know that this is a human problem and it is prevalent, unfortunately, in every country in the world. So we as humans, we as Americans, and yes, that's what Islam teaches us as Muslims. We have to take care of every person, poor, the needy, the hopeless, and the homeless anywhere around the world. Okay, so it seems like, okay, if there's a, a legitimate issue here that we want to go ahead and address, we're going to address as a community, as a global human community, right? Uh, but hold on, don't forget about, like, other, where is the right at this time where you have women being oppressed, for instance, in France? 
mm-hmm. and now they want to go to school, but they can't go to school just because now they're wearing the hijab. They're imitating Mary, the mother of Jesus, who Muslims, by the way, love and revere him and his blessed mother. Jesus is one of the greatest messengers sent to mankind. Muslims love him. And the Muslim women, they're obeying the commands of God Almighty. And now they're trying to dress in this modest way of dress. And now France, Marcon, whoever the president over there and others, Mm -hmm. they're oppressing the women. They're not letting them go to school. Why, Angelina Jolie, this is your chance (laughs) to shine and help the Muslim women of France. Would you agree? Exactly. You know, I received a post, actually. And in that post, it says... um, you can display it later. Women cannot go to school or study if they go against what they are ordered to wear and will end up getting arrested. Then it says, which country do you think that is? People all over the world, they may say it's Afghanistan, the Taliban. No, that's France. So where is the freedom of choice of the Muslim ladies in France? You know, they, they cannot go uh, outside freedom to what, what they want to wear. So it's important, as I said, Islam is a just faith. Islam takes all humans as equal, and we want to stand up for rights, human rights, you know, women's rights, uh, equality of all the humans. So we have to be fair, we have to be just, and that's a good message for uh, Angelina Jolie and all the people of conscience. So what action items, again, action items now we're giving to the Dean Show audience viewers. In the comments, I want you to add some of these numbers, the amount of incest, you know, the destruction of society with the porn industry. I mean, it's just rampant. I mean, homes are being destroyed. The little minds are being taken away, you know. You have also sex slavery. Prostitution. Ha- prostitution, and you have sex slavery happening here in, our lo- in, in this country that we love. This is something that, look this up, this is something the pedophile ring is just, you know, through the roof. You have so many kids being molested pedophile pedophilia is just rampant and i mean when when you hear this like in america that there is sex slavery happening Mm -hmm. today i mean it's an industry that's growing why isn't it being talked about this is an action item for you guys just look at the statistics look at this and put it in the comments below but let's give her angelina jolie some action items that she can actually so she can keep keep it fair and balanced yeah, so Brother Eddie, just imagine these statistics that I mentioned, if they were done by the people, by some Muslims, by the Taliban, the world would be in uproar. There would be wall-to-wall coverage in the media. Just imagine if Taliban were raping 93,000 Muslim women in that country. What do you think will happen? There would be invasion after invasion. You know, the poor ladies up there, they're getting raped. No, we have to stand up for any person who's getting, you know, who's getting victimized. So we have to clean up our own country. We love this country and, you know, God wants us to be fair and just and help any person anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also have, we'll switch for a moment to a conservative voice that's out there. He's also of Jewish descent. And let's touch upon this uh, Benny Shapiro. He's got a pretty big following and he's also creating some hysteria here because he's using the term Sharia. You say that women have rights that comply with Sharia, that means women don't have rights. He's using the terms Islam. Ah, uh, within the frameworks of Islam, under Sharia law. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hmm. And he's sending off a message kind of like, okay, now if anything has to do with Sharia or Islam, that now, you know, cat- catastrophe is about to hit. And he's using some really inflammatory language uh, out there. What, what, what do you have to say to some of these things that uh, what, uh, Benny's uh, saying? Benny's saying, you know, it's really important. We have to be really cautious uh, when anyone brings you any news, the Quran says in chapter 49, Surah Hujrat, verse number 6, that if any disbeliever brings you a news, investigate. So you don't harm people out of ignorance and you don't regret it later on. So if someone is saying, you know what, Sharia says this, jihad means that, that, part, that, that country, or that, those people are doing that, we have to take it with a grain of salt. We have to investigate first and foremost. So when we investigate uh, Sharia, for example, Sharia literally it means, uh, you know, the guidance that our Creator has given for humanity so we can live with peace with the Creator, peace with other humans, and live in justice and equality and, and, and unity within all of humanity. So that's what Sharia means. Sharia is not about oppressing women or taking, you know, 
uh, oppressing uh, the people who are, who are non-believers. Sharia gives rights, equal rights uh, to the women. So if someone is saying, you know what, Sharia, we have to blame, uh, we have to blame the Taliban because they want to implement the Sharia. First and foremost, Taliban are no angels. They're not perfect. If they're doing anything wrong, and they are uh, obviously, we have to blame them and not Islam, not Sharia, and definitely not the Quran. So Sharia, actually, the viewers may be surprised to find out, Sharia gave humongous rights to women. You know, the oldest continuous university in the whole world, according to UNESCO, it was made by a Muslim lady uh, who was uh, empowered by the Sharia. Sharia gives Muslim ladies not to be uh, forced into marriage. That's a surprise for Ben Shapiro, I guess. Sharia gives Muslim ladies uh, that uh, they can uh, initiate a divorce if they, if they want to. They can uh, have their own property. Uh, so all of these humongous rights were given by the Sharia. If some country is not implementing it, we have to blame them and not the perfect Sharia that Allah God has given to us. A couple of points I want to mention to Benny Shapiro. I had Rabbi Shapiro on the Dean Show. Oh, really? And he was talking about, we were talking about touching upon the Jewish Sharia that you, many people don't know, you have also Christian Sharia. Yes. You have also mentioned in the Bible, because many people don't know, like Christians and Jews who are Arabic speaking, they don't refer to uh, God as God. They re refer to God as Allah. And they have the term also Sharia. You have uh, Sharia mentioned 200 plus times in the, yeah, in the, in the uh, Christian Jewish uh, Bible. And this is confirmed. You can check. I Like I said, I had Rabbi Shapiro and we touched upon this. So you had Moses who was, and this is great because these are educational moments. We hear these things and mm -hmm. people speaking unacademically and they just, you know, going off their whims and their fancies and their desires. A lot of people have this just hate inside their hearts. And they're project, project, we don't know what's in their hearts, but you can just guess. They're just angry, uneducated, and now they're using such inflammatory language and words just to like rile people up, maybe get their numbers up, whoever the case. And it's mm. big business, bashing Islam. So again, like you said, we're not supporting any political party or group, but as soon as you bring in Islamic terms and Islam, now, hold on, let's, let's, let's fact check you. So these are the things that we mentioned uh, that they don't know. Sharia, it's in the Bible 200 plus times. Yeah, yeah, Moses, plus Moses brought Sharia. Yes, if you, if you look at Exodus. The Ten Commandments. Th yeah, ten if, commandments. You if you look into the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse number 3. The Ten Commandments are the Sharia guidance that Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, right? A mighty prophet that he brought from God to the people. So we say that is the guidance, which is a humongously beneficial guidance. You know, worship only one God. Do not make any graven images. Be good to your parents. Do not lie. Do not cheat. Do not murder. All of these are Sharia guidance, we say, that were given by God to Prophet Moses and his people. So yes, Sharia is there in the Old Testament and Sharia guidance is there in the New Testament. And then the last Prophet of God, Muhammad peace be upon him, he was given the complete guidance, the complete Sharia. Using that, humanity can prosper, get united, be moral, be just, and peace would be there between humanity definitely between humanity and the creator yeah we want to give credit where credit is due like for instance angelina jolie yeah. she was uh, at one point i believe she was speaking out and creating awareness for the greatest genocide that happened after world war ii in bosnia you had rape camps set up there and you had the chetniks and these were people their priests were blessing their guns you know and they were doing this on behalf of christianity that's what they thought but we know that this had nothing to do with Jesus' Christianity, but they are Christian, the Chutneys, and they were doing some uh, really horrific, evil things. A uh, in Srebrenica, where many people don't know, you can look this up, and this is a whole different topic, but when people are doing good, we're going to commend that good. Of course. So this is very important. Now she's coming out. Hopefully she has a good intention. She's trying to do some good. We invite her to come on to the Dean Show, mm -hmm. and she could talk about this, and even uh, Benny Shapiro, we could bring him on. And let's have a conversation. It's very important to have these conversations to fact check things so people don't walk away thinking like, okay, Sharia, you know, boogeyman coming to get me, Islam backwards, oppresses women. You know, uh, you know a human being, and we could touch upon this, a human being will make 
uh, grave errors, make mistakes, a, they might end up, or a group of human beings might end up oppressing a uh, society of people, but Islam can never be oppressive. It could never be. That's the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's the example coming from the Quran. You know, one example that we can give to Ben Shapiro, for example, that there is a synagogue in Afghanistan that has been there for literally centuries. When Taliban came to power, they actually protected it. They gave the Jews in Afghanistan a right uh, to openly go and uh, pray in there, right? So the Jews have the, they have the autonomy to have their own culture, their own synagogue, their own freedoms. And that was the example coming from also Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When he went from Makkah to Medina in the very first migration, he found a, uh, a, a big number of Jews up there. So what he did was he made a constitution with them called as the Medina Charter. And in the charter, it says that the Jews and the Muslims would be one people. We are going to look out for each other. And the Jews, you have your own synagogues, your own culture, your own freedoms, your own punishment system, your own justice system. So they were a, so they were a autonomous Jewish state within the true Islamic state. So that is uh, the gold standard that, that we need to follow. That's the, the big question. What is your measuring stick in life? Your morality measuring stick? What's your moral compass? Uh, we had, for instance, Habib, who's now like somebody who many people know of. He was the UFC fighter. And he got some heat because he made a statement about these ring girls. You mm. know, the ring girls, he said, this is like, uh, they're pretty much useless. The job is useless. You follow mm. me? Not saying the women themselves, you know, Islam honors the women, honors uh, their, our, you know, uh, aunts, our mothers, you know, heaven, as Prophet Muhammad said, is under the feet of your mother. So this is something that you can end up going to the hellfire if in today's society where you have young kids throwing F-bombs at their mothers, at their parents, you know, throw mm. them in, throwing them into uh, you know, nursing homes at the first uh, chance they get. Uh, so and forgetting about them. Right. So the grave respect towards our elders, it's kind of normal in the society. Right. Exposing women as sex objects. It's rampant here. You know, this is abuse at a high at a really high level. So where are you now to go ahead and correct these wrongs that are happening? You follow me? And but here's the thing. That's when the moral compass is on. What are you judging by? Yeah. It's kind of you think, OK, the less I wear, the more I'm free. You know, um, I have said this many times. Yes, we have to call out any abuse of any rights anywhere in the world. But U.S. is in no position to call out, you know, uh, racism in some other country, human rights in some other country, women's rights in some other country, when we know that right in our country, all of these abuses, you know, just last year, all of these racial riots that we saw. Just imagine if the same thing would have happened in Afghanistan media would be like in a big uproar. The whole world would be in a, in a, in a big uproar. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Look at these Muslims, you know, no justice. You know, look at how they're oppressing the blacks and the people of color. So we have to be uh, fair. We cannot be hypocrites. We cannot have double standard. Islam wants us to be fair and just. Yeah. Here's one other thing. Angelina Jolie felt compelled to join in a movement when women and young people in Afghanistan are losing the ability to communicate on social media and express themselves freely. So we're talking about freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, um, I, you know, with all due respect, we have not seen more people losing their ability of freedom of speech now here, like we're experiencing here in the U.S. And now to go ahead and to make those comments again, without mentioning the things that are going on here. You know, I have so many people who will talk about certain topics and they're getting their YouTube channels, their Facebook channels, everything is just being taken down. People are losing them. So what happened to freedom of speech here that people are losing and now we're going to criticize someone in another country? What about our home right here? Yeah, yeah. You know, they, I know a few Muslim scholars when they made some statements about LGBT. They Wait, have are you been talking about the alphabet movement? <laughs> yes. Okay. So LGBT movement, right? The homosexuality, the lesbian, all of that. Uh, they have been banned from traveling to this country. Mm -hmm. So where is the freedom for those individuals to freely, you know, talk their mind and to have a discussion and, you know, and a fair comments regarding that topic. Yeah. So it's important.
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's one. I mean, people have talked about, you know, other topics and they know they cannot say certain words because they will get their videos taken down. You know, so again, this is just a Frangelina Jolie and many others. I mean, this is we got to keep it all across the board where it's fair and balanced. So one topic, you know, some people, some viewers, they may have in mind when they see the photos uh, and, and also the images coming from there is, you know, this uh, enforcement of the hijab or the modest covering. No one has the right to enforce, people may say, right? Women have, women have the right, whatever they wear. But that's not the case anywhere in the world, anytime in history. As all of us, we know that uh, unrestricted freedoms for any individual never happened in the history of humanity. I mean, a, a society cannot be civilized with unrestricted freedoms. There have to be some restrictions to the freedoms. Yes, freedom should be there. We are all for freedoms. Islam is there for freedoms. You know, in fact, the Quran says in chapter 2, verse number 256, La ikhraha that that uh, there is no compulsion in faith. People have a freedom to choose their faith. However, it's important. In our country, there is restriction to what we can wear, what we cannot wear. If we disobey those uh, restrictions, they would be arrested, there would be fines. You know, when you go to the airplane, people have always been, you know, uh, uh, taken out from the airplanes because uh, they were not wearing something proper. When people go to schools and colleges, they're always a dress code. Uh, when we go to a restaurant, th there is a dress code. So right now there is a dress code for the, ma uh, for the mask. Many places you have to wear the mask, which is a mandatory. So Taliban and Afghanistan, if they are enforcing certain uh, laws of modesty, they're not going against anything that all of us all over the world, that we are doing it likewise anyway. Mm -hmm. We may disagree with the methodology that they are using, maybe the aggressive methodology, but the principle, uh, the concept of modesty is there in any country. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, it is there, Old Testament. In the New Testament, it is, it is there. In the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse number 5 and 6, the, the Christian ladies, they are commanded to also cover their hair. It's a commandment, right? So when our Creator has given a dress code for both males and females, we have to cover certain parts of the body. We cannot wear tight clothes. We cannot wear transparent clothes. We cannot wear clothes of the opposite gender. So these are the commandments that uh, maintains the chastity and the harmony and the justice and peace in the society. So we may disagree with the way that they're implementing it, but we cannot disagree with the concept of modesty. Yeah, just to touch upon that, yeah, you have cer certain medical interventions that are happening now and against people's consent. Uh, and many people are being forced into a corner and they might not agree with things, but this is how now um, it's being pushed on a certain pretext and you don't really, at the end of the day, you're losing more and more of your freedom. So that's interesting. It's how you make that example over here. You also now in another country, the whole point is we have enough problems here. Why are we, <laughs> why are we, you know, if we took the majority of that money and spent it here, you have people that, like Chicago, you know, the, you you know, they called uh, Chicago Chirac. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, you, you heard that term? <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Yeah, because of so much violence and shootings and whatnot. You have uh, places like Detroit um, and other places that, imagine if we took that money and we opened up youth centers, we made more park, we uh, increased the level for education. Mm -hmm. Imagine if that money was taken, invested in some of these urban areas and other places around the cities. Imagine, you know, how much more in health care and all the, imagine how much more good yeah. can be done. Two trillion dollars. My tax paying dollars and your tax paying dollars and their tax paying dollars that we have spent up there in Afghanistan, right? You know, there is a literally thousands, if not millions of people in this country who are in the student debt. They cannot purchase cars. They cannot purchase homes. They are in a vicious cycle. We could have used that money right over here for the education of our youth, our children, and, and our families. You know, all of this wastage, uh, close to like $10 trillion in the war in Afghanistan and different places. So that's precious money that we should be using over here. How many single mother homes, how many homes uh, that are, people don't have homes, they're living in cardboard boxes. Just look at LA, you look at, you know, Chicago, look at these major cities where people are homeless. 
right? Imagine yeah. how many people we can give homes, uh, take care of, how many people we give jobs so they can have homes, how many people that money can go ahead and be spent wisely, properly, if put back here. Yeah, you know, uh, it's not just the money part, it's the loss of lives, loss of suffering. Uh, that's a whole different... Uh, no, but we have to touch yeah. upon it. You know, uh, more than one million people, people say three million, four million, five million, just in Iraq, of the embargo and the drone missiles and the occupation and this, you know, mega bombs. Same thing, one million people, innocent people in Afghanistan, they had to suffer. Our people in, in this country has to suffer, right? More than 5,000 families, their youth, they died. The soldiers over here. What about all of them? So it's important for us that, yes, if we see that there are problems in other country, yes, let's work with them to solve the problems. And that's what Islam teaches. We have problems, enough problems in this country, enough problems in France, uh, you know, uh, uh, Australia, Europe, South America. So invasion is not a solution. Mm -hmm. Invasion is not a solution, right? War is not a solution. War should be the last resort. We have to exhaust all the means, but we can prevent many, many sufferings. First, we have to take care of our country. Many have said war is a racket mm -hmm. and you go into other countries and you plunder and you steal. And what happens is now uh, it becomes a business, and it's sad to say, and I, at the other pe at the innocent Afghan people's expense. So, you mentioned yeah. something about the 51st state. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's really important. Some of us may be surprised to find out that you know how come uh, you U.S. is pulling out of Afghanistan. We may, <laughs> you know, for us Americans, we think that you know Afghanistan is part of the U.S. <laughs> it's not the 51st state of the U.S. No. We were uninvited guests in Afghanistan. You know, Afghanistan is, uh, what do you call it? It's called as the graveyard of the empires. The Mongols came to rule Afghanistan, they were defeated, right? Uh, the Mughals came to rule Afghanistan, they were defeated. Uh, the British, three times in history, they wanted to rule Afghanistan, they were kicked out. Russia recently, and US right now. So, you know, it's important that uh, ruling and all of that. But, you know, one important topic, Brother Eddie, is the opium trade. Mm. All of us, we know, drug problem is a problem, unfortunately, that is plaguing many parts of the world, especially the Western countries. Afghanistan, before the Taliban came to power in 1996, they used to have like 95% of the opium trade. I, it was from Afghanistan before before the Taliban came to power. After the Taliban came to power in 1996 all the way to 2001, they eradicated the opium problem and the narcotic problem. So one of the statements that uh, they made when they came to power now is that we want to make Afghanistan narcotic free. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. But after they were kicked out by our forces in 2001, again, the opium trade, thanks to the blessings of the U.S., it went up again, 95%. That's destroying humanity, our youth, our children. I'm not saying that, you know, that they're angels. No, we, they are just like us. Uh, they are making mistakes. We have to support them. Uh, we have to educate them. This is what Islam says. But we have to look at the realities opium trade and the narcotics and the drug problem at least they want to solve it we don't have a solution over here i mean you got all your your, your pipes you know leaking in your house and your house is flooding and now you're over here um going to someone else's house to try to you know patch up their plumbing mm -hmm. i mean take care of you know we we have so many issues happening and i, I see what you said i mean it's just now going you had drone attacks you know, happening over there. You've had innocent people uh, dying, innocent children. And it's just interesting. Where were you like for 20 years? Someone like um, Angelina Jolie. Mm -hmm. And you had, I had a guest on the other day who was talking about that money that wasn't spent in Afghanistan. That went into people's, that actually came back here. He was talking about how Coca-Cola bottles and others, they were priced up to like almost like 30, 40 bucks for, for a, a can of Coke. Really? So it was just being brought back here. There was no roads, no schools. There was n there's nothing built there. Yeah, and, and the only winners I would say, it's not the Afghan people, it's not the you know American people, 
it is the war machines all of these big corporations all of these you know uh, all of these production plants all of these uh, you know big ceos yeah. they were making money out of these wars so we have to realize that it is coming from my and your tax paying dollars mm-hmm. um, have you heard the name of uh, sister yvonne ridley yeah yeah i just <laughs> had her had her on the program yes 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 so interesting right we can demonize the uh, taliban and the and the afghanistan all we want yes they're not perfect we're not here to support them yvonne ridley way back about 20 or so years ago uh, she was captured she she was a uk uk journalist she went to afghanistan for reporting and she got captured by the taliban and she was there for a few months or so and she became really afraid and she w- she was abusing them and spitting at them with a smile the taliban told her you know why are you behaving like this uh, with us uh, you are our guest we want to take make the best treatment of you she was given a royal treatment and she was freed she went back to uk england and there of her own choice she embraced the faith of islam because of the behavior of the taliban so what we can what can we conclude from this one major thing is the ayah in the verbatim word of god almighty the quran when the news comes to you mm-hmm. from a fasik from a evil do from uh, a person like this you need to really do your research go and check it up you cannot just blindly follow so let's talk about that and what lessons we can take from all this you mentioned also because that's the buzz now you know it's sure. about uh, women and like the whole world's worried about these women i mean so uh what what do you say to this you had also a reporter an executive others on the ground so you have other news coming out that's mm-hmm. no no our 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 channel's still up we're still good you know so it's like seeing through the media manipulation the lies the distortion and the agenda that many people push through naive minds if you're naive if you don't really have some fact checking done then you're going to end up falling for a lot of the uh, misinformation. Yeah, so one important uh, action item for all of us is chapter 49 of the Quran verse number 6 that encourages and commands every single one of us the believers to investigate the news. And we should know that things are really fluid up there. We cannot make any conclusions when the things are fluid. And we have to take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, because you know obviously uh, the us uh, we lost the war okay this is just granted four presidents right uh, involved in this war 2 trillion dollars uh, uh, you know all of the suffering 20 years we lost the war we have to just take it take it right it's a hard pill to swallow for some people however losers demonize the winners This is just a fact of war. People demonize each other in the war. So we have to take the news with a grain of salt. Coming from both sides, I'm not just saying from the US, coming from both sides. So we have to watch neutral news. Al Jazeera for example or BBC for example. So we have to in, uh, uh, expand our scope of the news media, the news channels and the social media. Number 2 is important that uh, we when we look into the realities of the ground we also have to find out that what are the women in afghanistan what are they saying what are they doing so npr they did a report in which they they had a live interview with a journalist up there and that journalist they were asked the question what do you see on the street are the women up there what are they doing do you see them and he reported back to npr saying that you know what there are women they're roaming around there is a coffee shop i can see women there they're socializing up there and then when you see this uh, news anchor you know there is this lady afghan news executive says we thought we would be shut down by now so this lady a muslim lady she's an anchor person right she's an anchor person and she's saying that you know i am there live every day having the news and taliban has not shut me down and she's not the only person there are many many ladies like that they're not perfect but we have to know that there there is more to what our media is saying so we as humans an action item is investigate more look into the other channels other uh, you know non american channels i would say uh, talk to muslims talk to muslim scholars 
But the most important thing is, do not judge Islam by the actions of some people out there. Right? Islam is perfect, Sharia is perfect, the Quran is perfect, the noble example of Muhammad peace be upon him is perfect. So do not judge that which is perfect by the actions on the ground of those individuals who are not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Dr. Karen Armstrong, she said, just like we don't want to judge Islam by the actions of some terrorists, we don't want to judge Jesus by the actions of some Christian terrorists. Yes. So I would like to invite our guest to read the Quran, which is the source of Islam. Uh, that's how you can find out that what Islam stands for. Look into the noble life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You'll be amazed to find out that uh, how he brought unity to humanity, how he eradicated racism, how he eradicated poverty, how he uplifted women equal to men in the eyes of God. Yes, different responsibilities, but equality of reward. How he uh, brought morality, how he made a society, a sober society, right? No one was drinking and no one was taking drugs. Just imagine a society like that in our time. So that is the beauty of Islam. That's the guidance of Islam. And we invite you to study Islam. That is a uh, beautiful invitation. And just to um, repeat, we're here not to support any political party, but to give a clear example of through uh, the proper means, uh, which is the Quran and the example of Prophet Muhammad, what Islam is and what Islam isn't. So now just really quickly, for the people out there who now they use this as a pretext, you know, to want to still invade a country or countries. And they say, look, well, these are the guys, you know, because the countries are invaded because of 9-11. And it's a harboring place for terrorists. So under this pretext, this is why they feel they should be there or they're trying to just go ahead and use inflammatory language to get people riled up to kind of get some other country over there, get somebody over there to get back to square one. There is a professor in the, in the Chicago campus here, in the University of Chicago, and he wrote a book called Dying to Win. He did a 25-year study on terrorism. And his main conclusion is that it's not uh, Islam or the Quran uh, or the Muslim culture uh, that is making people extremists up there. It is the U.S. occupation. As Dr. Uh, Pape, Robert Pape, right? Yes, exactly. So non-Muslim scholars who are specialists in this field, they are saying that it is our own doing that we are making terrorists. You know, they were some drone missile operators. They came on the news and they said, you know what? 90% uh, 90 actually of our drones, they hit the wrong target. They are hitting women and children and uh, how homes and farmers and parties and people are dying children and women and you know so they said that you know we are creating the terrorist so the best thing that we can do is you know Quran says in chapter 5 verse number 32 that saving one life is like saving all of humanity taking one life is taking the life of all of humanity Islam says that every life is precious may that be women and children and black and white and and different religions Islam and uh, I mean Muslims and Christian all life is precious in Islam that means we as humans, we have to be equal and uh, just when we deal with other people. Mm -hmm. There should not be any, um, you know, UN vetoes when it comes to Israel, for example, against the Palestinians. No, all life is equal in the eyes of the uh, in 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 the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. So if we behave with that mindset, inshallah, God willing, there would be justice in the world. Racism would be eradicated. Uh, women would be uplifted, they would not be objectified. Humanity would be an ideal humanity with, uh, with Allah's mercy and guidance. Uh, how just do you think people would be with themselves and instead of getting into a state of cognitive dissonance where now if the, the truth was brought to them, they investigated it further and they saw like close to 4,000 architects and engineers and surveys have been done where people are demanding a new investigation and now if they look at this study that was done, an independent study of $300,000, and they looked at all the evidence and they saw that, hold on, 
that actually Islam, we know Islam and Muslims had, I mean, Islam had clearly nothing to do, nor does it encourage killing innocent men, women, and children. This is just clear. It's lucidly clear. But now when the whole new slogan, the slogan comes out, never forget. But now when this really sinks in, never forget that Islam and like uh, David Ray Griffin, who is a scholar in this area, he's actually a Christian, mm. and he says that all the, the evidence, paraphrasing what he says, that somehow linking uh, Muslims to this act has been fabricated. So, and this is not some conspiracy theorist. These are, this is an academic, and many academics, you know, structural engineers and others are coming out and saying that really Muslims had nothing to do with it. So this is, would someone be sincere with themselves to accept that truth, because this again was a catalyst. So you got two, uh, you have two things you can deal with. These people living in a cave, uh, they just hate our way of life. Mm. They hate us. You know what I mean? So they're going to come. They don't even have TVs. Mm. <laughs> so they're coming all the way over here, you know, to try to hurt us. Or this is a big racket. This is a big business. And that's the motivation behind 99% of these wars. Are you ready to accept that truth? What do you think? And you be know, just with yourself? Yeah, yeah, we have to be just and we cannot be gullible. You know, do not blindly follow the media. You know, media has their own agenda. They want to have more sponsors. They want to have more business. So they want to just uh, show that news that is going to bring the most viewers. The news may be true. There may be small truth to it, but they will just, you know, spin uh, the truth. So it's important for us. A prime example would be invasion of Iraq with the pretext of weapons of mass destruction. And now we found out now uh, that, uh, uh, who was that uh, Prime Minister of UK? He has to come on the TV, he has to apologize. That, you know what, uh, we made a mistake. Weapons of mass destruction in 2003 when US invaded Iraq with the false pretext. That's a beautiful example. That was a lie based on a clear lie. One million people who's going to come on their, back their families. Now. On their back now. Yes of the US and the UK and the 54 allies who supported them. These Muslims died. And look at the power of the media mm. and all these experts and everybody coming together mm. and they were able to come together and orchestrate this, this invasion to come in and kill all these people. Look at that. Ben Shapiro, if you're listening to this, yeah. I want you to do a show on this, how the US is at fault and who was the president up there, right? It was Bush, a conservative president, a, a, a supporter that Ben Shapiro supports him. Come on. If you are truthful, if you are Jew, if you are a Bible believer, you have to have the guts to come and say, U.S. was wrong, we need to compensate them, right? Every family should get millions and millions of dollars from your tax-paying dollars because you supported a wall like that. Humans' Islam is just, is equitable. We have to make sure that uh, we have to stand up for every person a Jew, a Christian, a Muslim, an atheist, everyone. So we cannot just uh, go and bomb people and then say, you know what, we are sorry. No, go and compensate them. So at the end of the day, my dear friends, my dear viewers, right, Brother Eddie, this is not a show about geopolitics. This is a show about, we want to make sure that our creator has created with a purpose and just as discussing about Afghanistan in the U.S. and the war and all of that is not enough. We have to look at the higher, the greater purpose that our, our Creator has given to us. And that purpose is uh, that we should be worshipping the Creator. We should be uh, just to people, good to the neighbors, good to parents. You know, follow the laws, the, the, the wonderful laws Allah has given. And Allah has promised in the Quran, chapter number 2, verse number 25, if a person has the right belief, means not worshipping a human, an idol, an animal, but worshipping only the Creator and doing good deeds, the way our Allah has mentioned in the Qur'an and through the example of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Right belief and doing good deeds, Allah promises the people eternal paradise. So that's where you and me and all of us, we want to go. So we need to make sure that by following God's guidance as present in the last testament, which came through Muhammad, peace be upon him, that is the way for our salvation. And I hope and pray that may God has mercy on us, may God unite us, may God Amen. empower us, uh, may God uh, help us to defeat Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, racism, anything out there. And that is possible when we wake up, when we realize there is a creator, there is a last testament, the Quran, example of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that's the way for having the best in this world. Inshallah, God willing, paradise in the hereafter. 
a lot to think about. We got the message. Hopefully, get it to Angelina Jolie, Benny Shapiro, and others out there. The conservative voices, people out there. We got a lot in common, and uh, other things that we can build on. And I hope that uh, people can benefit from some of this, uh, some of the things that we've just discussed. Thank you very much, Dr. Sabir. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. And thank you guys for tuning in here to the Dean Show. Uh, help get this message out to Angelina Jolie, Benny Shapiro. And we invite them to come on the program so we can have a nice discussion about these things, putting things from a different perspective, from the perspective of really sincerely trying to get the truth out there, especially if you're uneducated in Islam. Continue to tune in. Read the Quran for yourself and check yourself where you really get your information and be sincere and do what our guest was talking about. Ask the creator alone for guidance and he will facilitate a way and be hungry and have that earnest desire to really want to know the truth. Because the truth shall set you free. We'll see you next time here on the Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We'll see you next time. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.